Welcome back to What Are Teenips with General Disturbance. This is the S51, the Tier 7 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Abbey under the command of Angelina 75. Yet another contest battle between Angelina and Talon 1958, this time in the S51. Both of these replays are recent, so they both count towards the contest. And Angelina gets the first go. Okay, she's aiming at a 152mm howitzer down the Abbey Road. It looks like somebody's coming up the road because... Oh, and they stopped. Rounds out. Oh, that landed right behind him. She didn't get any damage, but she got some stun assist because she stunned him. And he's now taking fire. And there he goes. And she's just spotted an enemy tank in their cap circle at the moment. It's the IS. Our guys are in the Abbey grounds, and so they spotted him for her. And that one landed right next door to him. Okay, we've got a T-29 trying to come up to the Abbey. Angelina's probably going to try and nail him if she can. Now the S-51, it's got a standard reload time. If, you, if it's using the 152mm gun. Oh, that one just landed a little long. The standard reload is 23.97 seconds. Angelina's got it down to 19.64. Now, that is the 152mm gun. You, obviously, you can have the 203mm, which is the top gun. But Angelina's elected to have the sh uh, stop gun because it is faster. You get more shots and you've got more ammo to play with. You get 30 rounds to play with on this RT. And, oh, and there's an enemy tank there. And another one, an Indian Panzer. Rounds out. She hits the Indian Panzer for 65. I, I must admit, I do prefer the stock gun on the S-51 myself. Look at this. 1,052 hit points of stun assist so far from hitting the Indian Panzer. She now stuns the 53 TP as well. And the Indian Panzer's almost out of hit points. She could kill him with the next shot if she can get it on target. I think she can. Here we go. Rounds out. And she gets him. Nice shot. Okay, the T-29 did go into the Abbey grounds, but he's facing two of our teammates, or is it three of our teammates? Angelina's trying to work out where she needs to fire next. And I think she's decided that at the moment she needs to reposition. Now, yeah, that was a bit of an awkward fall there. Now, the KV-1S uh, is the donor tank that supplies the hull for the S-51. The S-51 was in design for quite a few years, but they never got around to perfecting it. So despite the fact they did have prototypes, they just couldn't get them to work because the force of the gun was so strong, it would literally shake the KV-1S hull to pieces every time they fired. And they also even tried putting two KV-1Ss together with one artillery piece in the hope that it would sort out the uh, suspension, and sort out the stress from the actual shock every time it fired. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I think there was just too much recoil going through all the vehicle for it to uh, stand up. Which is kind of curious considering the T-28, uh, which was a light tank, <coughs> pardon me, was able to, on the SU-8, technically carry a 152mm gun. But of course that was a tank that didn't exist. She just got a direct hit there on the AT-15. I suppose if you had to look for an RT that would actually would be able to stand up to the recoil of the 152, then it would be either the SU-14-2, the school bus, or it would be the SU-14-1, and they were much bigger tanks, heavier tanks, the T-35, and that AMX-1357 is very, very vulnerable right now, and now he's out the game. Yeah, big mistake. 152mm shell's going to make a mess of something with very thin armour. Now, two enemy tanks have now made it past the pass, the Scorpion and the AT-15. 
Angelina's aiming in on the 1815. If he comes around the corner, she'll give him what for. At the other end of the map, our team is doing rather well because we're six tanks up on the enemy now. And I think we've almost got this one in the bag. There's only four enemy vehicles left now. Two of them are down this end of the map. The other two are up the far end, include a Borsig who just managed to get a kill on our SP1C. And there's also an Artie up there, I think, somewhere. Or is he down here? No, he's not down here. Wherever their Artie is, he's probably not going to last very much longer either. So Angelina's decided to go after the Borsig because he's a nice juicy target with very thin armor. Rounds out. It lands right next door to him for 169, and she gets the stun assist off that one because he was wiped out immediately afterwards. They're going out to try and find the arty. They're not capping at all, they're going for it. There's always the possibility the arty might be in A8. Oh no, he's in A7 instead. He was right next door. He's been spotted. Angelina's dialing in, but it's too late because he's dead. And that just leaves the other tanks uh, down the uh, south end of the map. Angelina, I think, has decided that she's going to go to the enemy cap area. Which guarantees the win, because of course, once she's sitting in the cap, there's nothing to do that the others can do. Short of coming back to try and get a reset. And I just don't think that's going to happen somehow. If she moves over to the entrance of the road to the Abbey, she might be able to lob a shot in and hit the AT-15. That might be one that she's got in mind by moving over here. Yeah, I think that's what she's got in mind. Anything to get a bit more damage on the enemy. Not to put yourself at danger, though, if you can help it. She might be able to splash the AT-15A and take him out of the game. Watch where your little dot is. Watch where the dot is. That's it. That's out. That one hit the rock face, unfortunately. And they capped out at the other end rather than come down and kill them. Here's the end of battle stats and that was the first class tanker game from Angelina 75 in the S51. It's her first time she's had a first class. Yes, you can see the scrolls underneath. That's the first time. She also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. She got six in total and a win eight from the game was 779. She didn't really get a chance to do a lot of damage, but I think that mainly comes from the fact that where she placed herself during the game, uh, there were better places that you can get more damage on enemy tanks. And that's why I always recommend trying to go over to the west side of the map on this battle or the east side because there are places that you can multiply your damage and you'll see that in some of the replays where I've played them and you watch those sp spots and you can get an ace tanker from those spots. Anyway, let's have a look at the, um, uh, the team scores and see where she managed to come. Well, if we look at the scores, we can see she's actually in the bottom half of the table because the high caliber went to the TS-5, who managed to get 3,794 hit points. Second highest damage went to the enemy SU-152 with 2,206. And the third highest damage went to the Borsig on the enemy team, who got 2,205. So just one hit point between those two. And the enemy AT-15 survived the battle with a steel wall. And, well, Angelina, 663 hit points. Not a lot, but it was a good battle. The Panther also managed to get a Confederate in that game as well. When it came to kills, it was the TS-5 again with five kills. Two kills went to the SP-1C, the Oni, and Angelina. And only two kills went to the SU-152 and the Borsig on the enemy team. And, in fact, actually only three tanks managed to get kills on the enemy team at all. The RT was the other one. He managed to get one. But uh, that's pretty poor performance from the enemy team. They only got, um, basically, only three teammates managed to get uh, kills at all. When it came to base XP, Angeline's a lot higher because the TS-5 managed 1,484. Angeline got 942, mostly because of the stun assist she managed to get in this game. 825 went to the T-34-2. 
She fired 10 rounds, got 3 direct hits, no penetrations but 9 splash. Damage of 6, 000, uh, 663, not, not 6,000. Uh, all of it at more than 300 meters. She damaged 6 of the enemy, killed 2. I did 2,495 hit points of stun assist, of 7 stun. So I think you can see why she got such a high base XP. Because she did a lot of stun to assist her teammates to get the win. On a free-to-play account, she earned 30,540 credits and after resupply of ammunition, took away 30,540 credits because there was no cost. And 942 base XP times 2 for the first victory, took away 1,884 experience points altogether. So the first battle is a win, a victory for Angelina into the S51. Can... Talon 1958 do better in his S51 battle and it's a recent one so they are playing like for like during the same week. Let's see. And here's the next battle and this time round Talon 1958 is on the south spawn of Fisherman's Bay in his S51. Game started. Now some players d dislike the S51 intensely and I can understand why because they find it very difficult to control it to get accurate shots but in actual fact it's no different from some of the other RT you'll find in the game it just requires a bit of practice and then you get really accurate shots on the enemy it's a bit slow it's only got 30 kilometers an hour top speed and 8 in reverse it, um, you can have two different guns, you can have the 203mm B4 howitzer or you can have the uh, BR2 152mm but um, I prefer the 152mm uh, because you can get more shots, get more stun assist and therefore help your team to win. Okay well it looks like we're going to be firing towards the center line here. There was a Panther M10 behind that house, and there's a Bisonte C45 only a short distance away. That shot would be going too close to the house for my comfort, because... But that that looks okay. Rounds out. It lands near the C45, but not close enough to do some damage. Oh, and we know where one of the enemy arties is, because he just announced his presence. He's sitting in that bush right at the back. We know it precisely which bush he was in as well. So we're aiming for the Super Hellcat over on the west side of the map. We lost sight of him, but we're going to fire in anyway. And that must have woken him up. Now that uh, rig you see on the back of the F-51, that's to actually help load the shell. It's a kind of cradle system which enables them to put the shells on the bottom of the vehicle and then to uh, lift them up into the breach area. It's an open SPG, which means the crew would have to travel separately. If they tried to travel on the vehicle, they would probably come a cropper. Well, that shot stunned the uh, Bisonte, and he did pick up some stun assist. This is a tier eight game with tier seven tanks in it. So he is bottom tier. Oh, he's loaded, and there's a Bisonte with tracked at the moment. Rounds out. Direct hit. 203. Nice hit. Okay, looking towards the town, we've got an IS-6B and a Chrysler GF. Talon's almost loaded. Rounds out. It hit the side of the building, unfortunately. Now, as I mentioned before, the standard reload for this RT is 23.97 with this gun. Talon's managed to get it down to 19.64. He's using premium consumables. It speeds up the reload and it also helps with the aim. So it gives you a better performance overall. I definitely recommend any person playing an artillery piece to use premium consumables because it does make a huge difference. I wouldn't recommend it using it for the lower tier RT, the tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, but definitely use it for tier 5 and above. A near miss off the IKV-90B strips 168 hit points off him. And the Bisonte is still up there. 
He hasn't learned his lesson yet. And I reckon he'll probably be a wreck very shortly. Okay, we're going for the IKV 90B again. Rounds out. Lands short this time. So he got away with it that time. Okay, two tanks died there, one from each side. We're one tank down on the enemy at the moment. We've got a chance to take out that C-45, the Bisonte, is just behind that house. Unfortunately, that didn't kill him. It landed next to the wreck that's down there. Looking towards the town, we've got a Panther there, we've got a Chrysler. He has got a shot on the Chrysler, but the buildings do tend to get in the way, so he's got a red line at the moment. I wouldn't try aiming for the cries, so I think you'd hit the buildings instead. If you move a little closer to the water, you might be able to get a shot on the uh, Chrysler. But the trouble of doing that is if you actually drive closer to the water, then if you have to make a quick escape, you won't be able to. The IS-6B just stopped. And, well, he's been stunned now, but it didn't damage him, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Talon's going to have to make his way out of here. Because the enemy is getting way too close. Certainly for my comfort, I think I would have put it out of there the moment I saw the IS-6B cross the harbour area. Right in the middle of town. In fact, uh, the M12, who's nearby, ought to make his way out as well. In fact, I'd normally put it on autopilot and warn the M12, get out of there quick, move over to the west side. In fact, yes, the uh, the enemy tanks are headed this way and we're starting to lose teammates in that area. The M12 is the closest to the enemy now. I'm not sure he realises it. He's not moving. But we are up on the enemy. There's, uh, we've got a two advantage now. It's just we don't really have advantage when it comes to position. And um, that IS-6B is getting close. And there goes the M12. He didn't move, so he paid for it. You have to be so alert as to what's going on. Well, it looks like uh, Talon might be able to get behind cover. If he can get behind these trees before the IS-6B turns up at the cap area. But I don't think he's going to be able to get much further away than this. Unless he backs up as he's going. Because the enemy's now really close. And all he's got between him and the enemy is the Super Hellcat. His teammates are, are actually surrounding the area. There's still a two tank difference. And there's only four enemies left. But they're all down in this corner of the map. And there's the Panther. Okay, he's managed to get to the south. Okay, we're looking at him. Talon's dialing in on him. He's going to give him a wake-up call. Any second now. Rounds out. Direct hit. 234. Stunned. Looks like he fixed his tracks and pulled back quickly. In fact, the Chrysler GF has actually decided to go back into the town to see if he can get his way north to protect his cap area. One of our tanks ought to go up and start capping to put some pressure on the enemy. Oh, Talon doesn't want to move too far away just in case the Chrysler sees him. No, he's got a shot on the Chrysler. Okay, go for it. And the Chrysler's gone. Which means now there's only three enemies left. An IS-6B, an SU-101 and a Panther. We can't see them, but the T-34-3 is moving into the area. There's the 
the um, IS-6B. Dialing in. Here we go. Rounds out. Stunned him. Yes, having these two sets of trees in between us and the enemy is helping. And the enemy's just not spotting us. He can't see us. Talon's backing up. And... Here we go. Get another shot on them. Have another go. Oh, he's going to have a go for the Panther. He's a one-shot. Splash kill. Now he is on the move. Okay, now do it. Oh, we lost sight of him. The T-34-3 is facing off against that guy. There's also an SU-101 over there. He's gone to the aim again. Take the shot. Round out. Yes, got him! Because he was a splash kill. You only need to land around near him and he was going to be out the game. Okay, so it's just the IS-6B that he needs to focus on now. We can't see the SU-101, but it looks like he's down by the water side. And if Talon can get an accurate shot on that IS-6B, he might have to strip away enough hit points to make him a one-shot for the others. The Charioteer is moving into a position where he can help. The IS-6B suddenly turned around. Rounds out. That must have landed near him. He's down to one, well, combined, they're down to 1,604. I didn't see how many hit points that stripped away, but we'll watch that uh, counter at the top of the table and see if it goes down after his next shot. I reckon it will. Okay, the IS-6B is moving towards the town. So remember, 1,604 is the score. There's the SU-101. Okay, just adjusted there and unfortunately got a reticule bloom. Rounds out. And yes, he got a lovely hit. And the SU-101's hemorrhaging hit points. And they're down to 423 now. The IS-6 has just been trapped. The SU-101 goes down. This is the last enemy. He's a splash kill. And he's out the game. So it's a victory for Talon's team. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the third class tanker for Talon 1958 in the S51. He said it's only his third game in this RT, so it's not bad. It's, it's not an SU, by the way. It's an S51, not a, an SU. Um, it's uh, only his third game, so the best he's managed to do so far, he's got the scrolls underneath to show it's his first third class tank. Um, but not bad. He got a bruise in the middle beginning. At least five critical hits. He got five exactly. His win eight was 1,175. I don't think that was as high as Angelina's. But we'll look at the rest of the score first before we actually see anything more. When we come to damage, he actually was in the top half of the table. Uh, the highest damage in the game went to the Charioteer. Picked up a high caliber and top gun for 5,818 hit points. Second highest damage in the game was the enemy IS-6B with 2,837. And the third highest damage went to that T-34-3 with 2,296. Talent, uh, Talent managed to get 938. Not quite as many as uh, Angelina managed to get, I think. Um, but anyway, we'll have a look at that later. And when it came to kills, it was the Charioteer again. He got six kills. Three kills went to the IS-6B. Two kills went to the T-34-3. T-44, the Emil 1951, the Bisonte, and the Chrysler GF. Talon only got one kill in the game. That was that uh, Panther. When it came to base XP, it was the Charioteer who did the best with 1,412. 946 went to the T-34-3. 765 was that 785? No, 765 went to the T-44. And we can see that Talon's a little way down with 573, but it's still better than everybody on the enemy team. He fired 14 rounds in this game. Four direct hits, no penetration, but 14 splash. Damage of 938 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage five of the enemy, kill one, did 243 hit points of stun assist off 13 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 25,637 credits, 15,000 for completing a mission, 40,637 altogether after resupply of ammunition, took away 24,957 credits profit. He got 30 bonds for this game, 
and he also picked up 859 XP times 3, took away 2,578 experience points altogether. Very good performance for his third game in this RT. It's, as I said, it's a difficult RT to play, but it gets better. The further you go on, it gets much easier, and you're able to get much more damage on the enemy. And good job that he relocated, because if he stayed where he was, just like the M12 did, he would have got killed. Anyway, who won this game? Looking at the two, um, the two contenders... This is Talon. He got 1,175 in the third class. Let's have a look at Angelina's. Well, she got less on win eight, but she got a higher score. She got a first class mastery and a bruiser. So I would say that Angelina won this round because she not only got a better class, even though she got a lesser win eight, she got a better class and she got a higher XP score, if you remember, because... Um, she managed to get uh, a lot of stun assist off her game, 2,495 off 7. And if you look at Talon's, he only got 243 stun assist off 13 stuns. So Angelina outperformed him on stun assist. But uh, when it came to credits, uh, I think you can see if I pull that back up again, you can see that Angelina was on a free play account. Even if she'd... Um, on credits, she would have she wouldn't have scored as much as um, as Talon did, but um, her XP overall I think was better. Um, so look at that again, just to check. Yes, you see he got 573 base and 1719 if if he'd actually been on base, whereas Angelina got 942 base and 1884 because she was on a free play account. So I, I think I, I would award this one to Angelina because I think Angelina did better. Even though she got a lesser win eight, she did more stun assist and allowed her teammates to win the battle easily. And of course, that first class tanker really does count. So, yep, I'm afraid. Sorry, Talon. This one goes to Angelina. And uh, so it's one all now. One's got a Talon managed to win in the GW Panther, and Angelina won in the uh, the S51. And uh, I think that leaves them drawn. We'll have to see, wait and see who actually wins. They'll tell us. Um, but I think Angelina's in the lead because she's got a first-class tanker. And I, I think both of them got second-class tankers in the last contest, didn't they? Yes, in the, in the GW. So, uh, yep, Angelina's in the lead. Looks like it's going to be Angelina's weekend to lie in. Anyway, uh, we'll see in the next battle we put up. I hope you've enjoyed this replay or replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.